Howdy. This is going to be a Chromecast that I've titled The Great Divide. I'm sure that everybody will have connotations for this, not just me. And I'm speaking within The Great Divide, and it's within myself too, I must say. Um, between being very patient with what's going on and be, being utterly furious. Okay, so let's just begin with a, a part of a song and um, because it's just really meaningful to me that this is happening. Two different worlds, we live in two different worlds, we live in four, we've been told that a love like ours can never be so far apart. They say we're so far apart and that we don't have the right to change our destiny. Bullshit. We do have the right to change our, quote, destiny, which is to get even more divided, to fight each other, to get violent, and to ultimately need, ultimately beg for the authorities to come and save us from ourselves and institute even more draconian laws and, and put us all under the new world order. I know that sounds conspiratorial, and it is, because I know that's what's happening. And um, conspiracy, think about it, it means to breathe together. There are certain forces in the world that are breathing together that are on one side of the Great Divide, and there are other forces in the world that are breathing together on the other side of the Great Divide. That's one way to talk about the Great Divide. Uh, so the forces that are breathing together on one side we call now the Deep State. The forces that are breathing together on the other side are known derisively as conspiracy theorists or the truth community or the light workers or the alliance or you know QAnon followers. Ooh, QAnon, oh how horrible. That is the worst thing of all. Okay, there's the great divide there between QAnon and QAnon. Okay, they feel real different, those those two feelings. One is Oh my God, that is just disgusting. I mean, they, they just advocate violence. They're totally racist. I mean, this is just horrible. And then, wow, we finally found a method of communication that bypasses the MSM, that, that asks that we all pay attention to what we're really thinking, to how we're researching, to ask questions, to not take anything for granted, and to see how there are forces that are working with us we hope, we think they are, because this is all seeming to go according to plan. It does seem to be going to according to plan. And it's really astonishing. It feels even miraculous. However, it's not over till it's over, obviously. And the Great Divide is um, incredible how it is putting us in two different camps. Uh, and then more, you know, two different camps that split into two different camps that split into two different camps that split, 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 split. split, split, split. Kill, 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 kill. That's what they want. That's supposedly our destiny. Okay, so. So we have the Democrats versus the Republicans. And in a larger sense, we have the revolution versus law and order. Okay. Now, I used to be a revolutionary, you know, in the 60s sense of, like all good Marxists, I wanted to tear down society and make everybody equal and have the gradual withering away of the state. And we'd all get along famously. And uh, part of that was just a, um, what would you call it, a, um, was just because my dad was a Republican, I couldn't stand him. So, you know, this is something he just couldn't tolerate. So, of course, I had to be that. And in that case, I was just like all my peers back then because we were definitely trying to rail against, we were railing against the, the prevailing winds of our times, which was putting us into the Vietnam War. And so that was the thing that was really driving 
everybody. That and psychedelics were driving everybody. And so it was the peace, love, dope uh, generation that I'm a part of. And then in the 80s, a lot of people decided that they wanted to, um, you know, go within, do meditation, which is really a great thing that that happened. But then some of them decided to do, some of them decided that, yes, now they're enlightened and they don't have to deal with the world anymore. And they're more superior to people that do deal with the world. And then other people went completely into the world and started to get McMansions and giant cars and, um, you know, fortunes of one kind or another and become total materialists just like our parents were. So, in other words, history ebbs and flows. There's constantly going to be a shift from one to another, from one to another, from one to another. On a cultural level, it is socialism, This this the current overall split, socialism versus capitalism. Now, we all know the virtues of capitalism and the vices of capitalism. The virtues being liberty, independence, do your own thing, express yourself completely, but do it in a way that um, doesn't hurt anybody else, hopefully, and you're in competition with everybody else to be number one. And so it tends to be, it tends to degenerate into a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of situation when you're not oriented towards other people enough to recognize that everybody needs to uh, walk a, at least a minute in another person's shoes. So socialism is, we're all alike, we're all equal, we're all wonderful. I'm sure that if we got rid of the state completely, which means the state would be complete, <laughs> because we'd just be cogs in that machine, though we don't realize that's what it is. We don't realize that's what socialism leads to is inevitably communism, which um, destroys individual freedom, destroys individual li liberty. Uh, so you have, on the one hand, the service orientation of socialism, which is wonderful, and then you have the um, me, me attitude of capitalism, which isn't so wonderful, and yet it's what gets things done. It drives, it drives progress, supposedly, and yet progress then ends up being ruination of the earth. So that's not good. So something's wrong with our dichotomy. That's the problem. The divide itself is the problem. The problem is we think it's one or the other. It's never one or the other. We have to learn how to balance things and to dynamically balance these two parts of ourselves, really. You could say the left brain, which is logic. That would be, you know, the circuits, the electrical circuits of the brain. You know, it's like figuring things out. That's more capitalist. And the right brain is more magnetic and it's more field orientation. It's more like um, it's, it's forever. It's, it's living in the eternal now, you might say. And, but they're both real and they both have to live together. And in fact, if we, I, to, from my point of view, if we really get balanced, then we <clears throat> utilize the left brain in service of the right brain once we've oriented ourselves enough so that we are integrated internally with our feet reaching deep into the earth and our heads reaching deep into the sky, we're balancing above and below and right and left, which would be the socialism and capitalism or you know um, Republicans and Democrats or whatever you want to call it, dark and light. All of these opposites need to be continuously balanced, both vertically and horizontally. And so the balancing act is, is in the human heart. That's where it happens. It's not true that we're so far apart that we haven't the right to change our destiny, because we do. We can do this. Okay, so um, I'm going to back up a little talk about my own evolution besides being a revolutionary in my 20s. Um, then I became, you know, a classic liberal, of course, you know, you know, and I was really a fan of Hillary Clinton. I was, you know, one of the typical fans of Hillary Clinton. Until I read the book, and I probably mentioned this before, Transformation of America by Kathy O'Brien, who was trafficked, sold actually by her father, 
into the MK Ultra program, which was established after World War II when, the, when a bunch of Nazis were brought over here. I think it was Operation Bluebird. I think that was the name of it. I can't remember. Paperclip. Was. Paperclip, okay. And uh, so the people that had done, the Nazis that had been doing human experimentation in Germany, uh, screwing with people's minds to create altars, to create um, uh, trauma, through trauma-based conditioning to base to create a, a split personality and they did that here on her and many other people and they're still doing that probably though they may say they don't but so and you can do that constantly so you use torture to get the person to disassociate from what's going on um, often rape victims will do that too. You just disassociate. You're just not in your body anymore while it's happening because otherwise you wouldn't survive it. And so, so you do that and then you introduce programming uh, which can be like uh, Disney's things or you know Disney movies. They often make them watch those and then they take certain scenes from the movie or certain um, phrases from the movie and say so they might get a phone call it says okay so the phrase comes out of the phone and that means their handler has triggered a certain personality for them to utilize as they go and become perhaps a sex slave perhaps a courier perhaps an assassin perhaps a manchurian candidate for president so in other words these are people that are controlled by forces beyond them and whether they're controlled their minds are what are controlling them because their minds are no longer their own and this happened to Kathy and it's especially prevalent with young children to you can do that really easily to them and so she became a presidential level sex slave for the Clinton White House especially Hillary Clinton that's in her book and I read it probably 1999 I didn't believe it can't be true it's just too wild, it's just too weird, it's just too outlandish, it's just, I can't believe it. She also talked about human hunting parties, by the way, which now are coming, I mean, it's coming out that that's happening with people like Cheney and the Royals and who knows who else. But uh, I, I couldn't believe it. And so the, the cognitive dissonance, and I think the cognitive dissonance I went through back then is what a lot of people are going through now because more and more of the absolute horror show that is existing underneath this culture is coming out like the not just child trafficking and um, child rape uh, but also um, um, you know child torture for the purpose of killing them so that you can get the adrenochrome which is this elixir of youth which Hollywood and other people use to stay young uh, and the reason is, is because when the child's tortured, they're terrorized, and therefore the adrenals go over time. And they should produce secretion, what is it called? Adre adrenaline. They, they secrete adrenaline into the blood, and though the blood is highly adrenalized, and so that's why they call it adreno, adreno, or adrenochrome. And this is coming out into the mainstream now. This is not, um, not unknown. And of course, there's a lot of other things that have come out too, like the Catholic Church with all the pedophile priests <coughs> and all that. The Boys Town through the Franklin uh, film, the Franklin Files, a, a movie. There's a, a lot of places, if you're interested in, in this rabbit hole, you can go down if you haven't gone down it already. And a lot of people don't like to go down it. I don't blame them. As a matter of fact, I have a sister who I talked to just last night who she's beginning to hear about all this stuff and she just is having such a hard time with it but her solution is to pray which is great whatever whatever you're supposed to do do it and she's been doing this all her life she prays for whatever she wants like one of my one of my sisters had had um, early cancer with chemotherapy and uh, they told her she'd never get pregnant my, my sister who prays a lot she um, prayed for my sister for seven years, uh, religiously, I mean literally, and she got pregnant twice. She has two children. She, she's dead now, but she had two children, and they're both adults, and they're fine. So she understands the power of, of moving beyond this world and asking for something to come into this world, and I think a lot of people are in that area. I think 
there is now a movement to pray at 7.14 a.m. and 7.14 p.m. that everything will, will clear out, that the divide will, um, that we will have a unified nation, a unified world, um, and whatever it takes uh, so that we can avoid um, more bloodshed. Okay, this is not really going according to my notes at all. <laughs> and yet it is. Okay, so I just want to say that, so I, I started by, by uh, finally, it took me three years. It really took me three years to be able to absorb the transformation book and to change my mind from the liberal progressive attitude of we can get it done, progress is important, just keep helping people and so forth, <laughs> to recognize that no, there's just unbelievable stuff going on that I do not understand. And to start to dig, 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 dig. And I especially started to dig uh, in 2010 when I gave up my subscription to the New York Times. Let me talk about another I, I want to read you an email exchange with another sister of mine uh, just illustrating the great divide between the two of us, which interestingly enough is actually quite enlightened in the sense that she is very good at separating uh, an emotional reaction to, a, uh, to her own ideological views. And that's what we have to do. We have to learn how not to identify with whatever we think and instead play with it and keep on encouraging more and more understanding. Uh, so she, she has emotional intelligence, I would say, or emotional maturity. And two other people I'm gonna talk about here do also. And I'm trying to learn it. I tend to be quite hot-blooded, but I am trying to learn it. Okay, so here's, so when she, and she found out that I'm completely anti-vaccine, and she thought, well, why? You know, I don't understand that. And I was like, livid. And so she goes, she, she, this is on email. She goes, well, everybody's in their own bubble. Yep. And she goes, so, so, so then she goes, well, it must depend on who our sources are. Yep. So she says, and she's very highbrow. She says, I subscribe to the New York Times, the New York Review of Books, the London Review of Books, the New Yorker, and Harper's. Way too many subscriptions. I need to stop all but the N. NYRP, New York Review of Books, and the London Review of Books. I also listen to a lot of podcasts on Times Literary Supplement and the LRB websites and listen to the BBC, my preferred radio. I also, let's see, NPR has some good stuff, fresh air on the media, Ira Glass, but is otherwise insipid, so I'm turning that off more and more. And of course, I often catch the best of late night on New York Times. So that may be why we have different worldviews at this point. <laughs> so I wrote her back, I said, totally agree, the style you're in was the one I was in until early 2011 when I suddenly stopped my print subscription to the New York Times and Atlantic and New Yorker and began to dig deep and wide and long. For a long time, things hadn't been adding up for me, but I finally copped to that and bit the bullet and now I'm finding a few others of like mind, even here in this academic town, which is still addicted to all the same sources you use. I relish these new friends. All men around my age, all old farts in other words, one a retired math professor, another a world traveler, 153 county countries so far, another an extraordinary musician. Also one of my sons, he and I have been pretty much on the same wavelength since my husband Jeff died and I gave him Jeff's computer he had been living in a beach house without any computer, and so then he, he got Jeff's computer, put up some uh, solar panels, and had power. And he'd been trying to understand the world of economics, and so he was going to the local library and looking through things like The Economist. Suddenly, he had the whole world at his fingertips, and that's what started to wake him up. And then I ended it with, be well, dear sis. Then a little, so I'm just kind of giving you examples of what, what I've, you know, what I'm dealing with currently. So not too long ago, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who, for the second time during this pandemic, who lives in Portland. Just wondering how it goes for her there. And she says, well, I really like the protests. She says, I'm all for the protests. She said, we really like, we're protest country here. She said, 
but if they just stop burning things. <laughs> and then she said, and then when the feds brought in their goons to nail people when they were walking alone in unmarked cars, I mean, it just incensed her. And she assumed that I would also be incensed. But to me, it was like, I was not gonna go there with her because I don't have time to spend with her. And so I just changed the subject. But I could have said, yeah, that's how they, they what they did was film the people that were doing the violence. And when they started walking home, they were able to nab them without further violence, without further, without the friends around that they would incite each other to more. So that was a good way to do it, actually. Um, you know, from the Fed's point of view, which I totally understand here. So, you know, you're talking now revolution on the one hand and law and order on the other hand, I'm now in the law and order camp on some level, though not completely, because I want to balance. Yes, we need to revolve, we need to regenerate, we need to um, change a lot of things that are going on, but let's not just go and calcify it back to what it was. And obviously that's not gonna happen anyway, thanks to the pandemic, one of its um, graces, which has brought us change in invisible structures and visible structures everywhere, and we'll be doing so for this entire year and beyond. And I'm, when I say that, I'm speaking about I'm speaking from an astrological perspective, Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter all in Capricorn, moving right with each other, just going back and forth and back and forth in this certain area until the 21st of December. I might have said this in another podcast too, I can't remember. 21st of December where Jupiter and Saturn, both in the two days before that, had moved into Aquarius, where then on the 21st, the solstice, they conjunct at the exact degree and minute of zero degrees of Aquarius. Uh, I mean, that's to me like divine choreography. I mean, it's just amazing. And I think that's when things are going to start to shift. When the Capricorn tone is, which is stru Capricorn structures, forms, rules, laws, order, regulation. Pluto is destroy all that, you know, death and rebirth. Saturn is you know, the inevitable process of whatever it is that brings karma along. And Jupiter adds, you know, all sorts of stuff to it. If we're working with the Dharma of the situation, it will give us blessings. If we're working with the karma of the situation, it'll make things even worse. So uh, the Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, which is a rare combination, uh, they only combine, those two Saturn and Pluto only combine every 20 years, but um, it's even less often that they combine with Jupiter and then to put them at zero degrees of Aquarius where they will be for the next year, 2021 Jupiter and then for Saturn for the next two years uh, is really amazing. And then of course Pluto will stay there in the same area until about 2025. And what's interesting is that Pluto, I might have said this before too, but there's no sense not repeating it. Pluto is the planet that has a 248 year cycle, okay? So it's just now approaching the place where it was when this country was born back in, the, in July 4, 1776. So it's just now approaching its first Pluto return. And Pluto has to do with power, huge power that operates underground, operates underneath. And so what kind of power are we talking about? Well, the first kind of power in the first 248 years, we, it was very adolescent. Uh, we wanted to just to get our way as a nation. And we were in 93 years of wars. 93% uh, of the time we've been in war, which has changed now with Trump. Trump has not started a new war. He doesn't want any more new wars. Besides draining the swamp of all the pedophilia that, that Hillary represents, he is determined to drain the worldwide swamp, which has really been going for thousands of years with sacrifice of children. This is nothing new. So, um, let's see, I had another one too. Oh, and then I have two others. What time? Ooh, 24 minutes already, maybe not. Well, I just, let me just say that my, my very best friend for the last 35 years and I have found ourselves at loggerheads over this whole whole time of, of life. She used to be a, 
she she voted for Trump. She's on an island where nobody votes for Trump. She voted for Trump, and now she's switched. She now wants Bernie, which is, you know, too late for that. But she's totally into Bernie. She wants the Green New Deal, and I, I look at her and I go, well, that would be nice. I mean, yeah, it's very idealistic, but basically it's part of bringing in the New World Order, and it's not going to work that way. We've got to decentralize. So we have these spirited conversations that get very vociferous, the two of us. It's hilarious because we love each other and yet we become very vociferous, and yet at the end of our conversation, we just laugh and say, I love you, and hang up. I mean, it doesn't even matter. It matters in the sense that, wow, amazing how we could be so different now. How could that have happened? I mean, we're, we're still, I mean, everybody, anybody who's changed from left to right is going, when did it start for me? Because it's like a long, slow process, and I don't want to be right, though. I mean, don't want to be on the right. I want to be balanced. You know, I want to be balanced between the left and right brains, and um, constant dynamic shifting between those two, and integrated, integrated vertically and horizontally through the heart, through the heart, through the heart. So, I just want to read this last thing. Um, so, my own preference is to notice my own divisions, and to seek to follow what I seek what I see as the good. What direction do I want to see my own life and the life of society follow? It won't be capitalism and it won't be socialism. It's got to be some kind of dynamic between the, between the best of each. Both feature different and seemingly contradictory aspects of human nature. The first, capitalism values individual, individualism over community and socialism does the opposite. To me, both are crucially important. We do not live in two different worlds. We live in the same world, where we are all one. And yet each of us has our own mind, our own individual nature, and seeks to express it in the world. How to combine these two values is the real work of our time. So here's a couple of quotes. Niels Bohr, the opposite of one great truth is another great truth. And our favorite philosopher, that's an American, Emerson. Do I contradict myself? So I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. Thanks.